Are you guys ready to have a good time, get this show going? All right. We have a few guests, some people that we've had on the show before. We happen to meet them up in town and meet them up in town. <laughs> it's starting already. <laughs> Let us please welcome our first guest. He, is, uh, he works within the milieu of film. Please welcome the director, Werner Herzog. Very close stools tonight. Don't shame. <laughs> Scott, if if I may be so, <laughs> you are you are whipping me with the microphone cable in the manner of Indiana Jones. <laughs> I, I for some reason we have talked about Indiana Jones <laughs> during every tour stop Is this year. So, I don't know why. Uh, I never tire of uh, uh, analyzing uh, uh, film and uh, the tactics of its heroes. And uh, this Indiana Jones is a curious character because, of course, he is the hero. And yet uh, he is a, a rampaging murderer. <laughs> it's true. He could have... That guy with the swords, he could have tried to Didn't apprehend have him. to shoot him. He could, have, he could have walked away. He was very far away from the fellow <laughs> with the sword. He could have just turned right around and said, I don't want to fight. Also, why did Indiana Jones not join the war effort? <laughs> He's clearly an able-bodied man. Who loves killing Nazis. But we needed, I suppose, America needed its archaeology professors <laughs> back home. Yeah, he hated snakes, I, I imagine, like you. He hated nature. More than Nazis, apparently. <laughs> he could deal with there being Nazis in the world, but cannot abide a snake. So, Werner, it's so good to see you. It's good to see you. Uh, the last, I feel like the last time I saw you was in Boston, Mass. That sounds correct to me. Mm -hmm. Where did you park your car there? I'm always interested in, you know, people's parking situations in other states. Well, before then, uh, we had seen each other in Los Angeles, California, and um, I, uh, I will say that uh, I did not park a car in, uh, in Boston because um, I had my uh, phone's uh, GPS set to the wrong uh, instructions, and so I was forced to walk from Los Angeles to Boston. You... You realize that's just a suggestion. It's not, it's not the app forcing you to do what it is. I feel as if it is up to us to uh, obey the commands of uh, these uh, little computers because uh, what adventure uh, awaits us if we, if we, if we, if we do so. <laughs> do, you, do you feel like the computers are going to soon be sentient and rise up and take over the earth? I pray that this is the case. Why is that? You don't like humanity very much. I don't like nature. I like humanity. I like being a human being. Um, but uh, I do despise nature, and I wish we could get rid of it. What is your perfect ideal setting when you walk outside? Like, if, if you didn't have to look at a tree, you Do know? you remember those commercials for the uh, Macintosh computer where it would be uh, two people standing in a white void? I wish those two people would get out of the way. <laughs> Obstructing the view. <laughs> Precisely. Mm -hmm. um, well, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> How many words would you say are in your vocabulary? 
25? <laughs> great? <laughs> I feel like I use great a lot. Do you, is there a word that you have that you use constantly? Um... Someone vomited up, <laughs> up in the balk. Probably uh, despairing. Do you, does it, uh, when you're on your phone, does it autocorrect the minute Every you... Every single time. Sometimes I would like to say uh, to someone, hey, would you like to get some dessert? And it autocorrects to, would you like to get some despairing? And does the person kind of know what you mean? By this point, yes. <laughs> Who are you texting? Like, what is your life like? You know what I mean? It seems like every time I see you, we talk about work. We've talked about, of course, the Goodwill Hunting remake. The, it, is that still happening? It's, it's, still, it's still in the mix. But, I, you know, we never talk about your personal life, uh, you know, of like, do you have friends? I, I've never seen you, see you with I anyone. have uh, many friends. Of course, uh, one of my greatest friends is no longer with us, the madman Klaus Kinski, who was uh, my friend and nemesis uh, for many years. Um, I put him in many of my films, and on uh, one occasion he tried to bribe uh, the natives of a foreign country to murder me. <laughs> but... The joke was on him because the natives came to me and offered to kill him for free. Is that how he died? Did you take them up on it? I should say no more about this. We'll move on. We'll move on. So, um, do you have a new project in the works? I mean, do you, you're always up to such interesting things. You have, you know, several Port of Call movies that you, you've gone through. That's correct. The Port of Call series keeps churning on. I'm, very, I'm glad you asked because I'm very excited to announce that I have an online film school that is going to be available to the public. I read about this. I read something about this. I may have not clicked on the link, but I saw your name in a, in a link. Thank you for your uh, candor on whether or not you clicked on the link. I will certainly take that under advisement as I continue to live my life. What I mean to say is, is I don't have any of the info that I would need in order to sort of nudge you along the way here with your story, but... <laughs> Thank you for your nudge offer, but um, I already know my own story, so um, it is unnecessary. Um, it's an online film school. The idea is that you could go online to my film school and learn how to make films online. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about it. <laughs> That's the setup right there. It's an online film school. Do you, do you teach classes? Do they watch videos yes, of you? Yes, they will see me via uh, uh, live streaming, teaching classes and archival videos. And uh, I feel that anyone uh, who wants to make a film can make a film. Uh, and there is very little that you need to know. I, for instance, I say that storyboards are for cowards. Um, <laughs> If you are uh, meticulously uh, uh, making little drawings to say, I think this should happen at this moment, uh, you are not uh, being brave enough to live in this world, and uh, perhaps you should uh, uh, go take a hot bath with b b <laughs> bricks in your bathrobe. <laughs> I've, that's such an evocative phrase it I've is, never heard before. It's, it's the closest I could get from the German phrase. Oh, I see. You don't have a word for it here. <laughs> Which word did you substitute? The bricks, the bathrobe, the... Well, it's a, it's a concept. Uh, I see. The thing. It's like so, sh schau... Uh, what do you, what, what, how do you say that? Schau Schadenfreude. Schadenfreude. Yes, the, the, the joy in the despair of others. Right. Is that something that, that you take part in? Uh, from time to time, I am mm. only human. I believe uh, everyone does at some point or another. What matters is whether or not we stay in that place, whether we wallow in the despair of others, whether we uh, can only get our glee from others' pain, uh, whether or not we are putting a, a, a bucket filled with water over the door jamb so that somebody <laughs> opens the door and then the bucket of water falls on them, or if we are watching the Home Alone movies for the wrong reasons, because... Um, <laughs> 
what you are supposed to be watching that film for is to see a beautiful uh, reunion of a family, uh, not uh, this uh, cruel, sadistic boy. <laughs> who somehow his brain devises these insane tortures that he does to these grown men. What, what, do, you think, what do you think Kevin McAllister is doing as a grown-up? Is he, like, torturing... I am certain that he is dead. <laughs> you may ask me any, any, any character from cinema, I will tell you if they are alive or dead. Oh, this is good. Really? Fantastic. Gotta go with Tron. <laughs> Tron is alive. Tron's alive. Yes. Why do you think that? But he's very good at light cycle. Keeps up some exercise with that light cycle. <laughs> <You're> s- <laughs> You're thinking of the light cycle as an ex- exercise bicycle. Yeah. Well, he gets. Yeah. It's uh, the. Light Doesn't he take light cycle class? And- have you seen the film Tron? I, I believe I have. The light cycle races are uh, races to the death. <laughs> they are not so much somebody playing sweet 80s jams while uh, everyone <laughs> sweats it out on their light cycles. Maybe, I, maybe I'm forgetting. It could be. Let's see. Okay. How about Uncle Remus' Song of the South? That's a tricky one. He is uh, sealed forever inside the Disney vault. He is, it's true. He is neither alive or dead. He is a Sh- Schrodinger's racist movie. <laughs> How racist is it? You'll have to open it to find out, but you can't open it to find out because no one would let you see it. <laughs> hmm... As long as you can't see it, it's not that racist. <laughs> it didn't happen, in other words. It happened. Mm. <laughs> what is your favorite film of all time? I don't know, and you can't say one of your own. You can't say, what was that one you did, Bear Man? I feel... I think that you are referring obliquely once more to uh, the one film you seem to have any cognizance of my having directed. <laughs> which is to say the film Grizzly Man. Grizzly Man, that's right, that's right. Yes, it is. (laughs) I already knew that it was right. Grizzly Man is about a man who... Why don't I stop you? (laughs) I have to know, what do you think Grizzly Man is about? Here is my honest opinion, using context clues of licks I have not clinked on about Grizzly Man. He is a tightrope walker at the circus. Okay, I'm right so far. He, I, I will render my judgment after you have finished. Oh, okay. And he's got a real slippery rope because someone waxed the rope in the morning, and they're supposed to wax it at night so that it hardens overnight, so that when he gets on it, it's like a real smooth but hard taut rope. But they waxed it at night, right before his performance, so he gets up there and he's like, whoa! And that's all backstory that we know about. That doesn't happen in the film. Fade in. This guy, this modern-day Goldilocks. He's got real long hair. Long blonde hair. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful man. He is best friends with 85 bears. And in the end, he finds one that's just right for him. And they fall in love. And they get married. What is uh, so impressive about uh, what you have just said is that uh, not only have you completely uh, misunderstood what my film might be about, it seems you don't have a firm grasp on the story of Goldilocks either. (laughs) That's fair. 
she did not sample uh, 85 bowls of porridge <laughs> or try out 85 beds. How many did she have? She had three. Three. Of everything. She, was in a, she broke into the home of a family of three bears. Hence the name Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Did she, is her name meant to imply she's like good with locks? Like she, that's how she broke into the house or what? Do you remember when you said that this Goldilocks character in your film had a beautiful long golden hair? Sure, like locks of hair, yeah. I think it's that. Oh, got it, got it. Shall I tell you what Grizzly Man is truly about? I would love to finally figure this out because I've heard a lot about it. It's a touching story of wish fulfillment. <laughs> there is a young man who wants something more than anything else in the world, and in the end, he is able to make his wish come true. It sounds amazing. It's like a modern day Pinocchio or something like that. Certainly, it lacks a, a Jiminy Cricket character. <laughs> that some might argue that was me. Do you sing in the film, or...? <laughs> All of my singing scenes were cut for time. Also, because it was a documentary, it seemed inappropriate. What were some of the songs that were cut out? I would love to hear some. Give us maybe uh, a glimpse of the theme song. <laughs> Once there was a boy, a very special boy. He had a wish to see a bear from the inside. Those are some short credits. You ask for a taste, not the whole thing. <laughs> That's how you get me. Every time. <laughs> so, so you've obviously directed all these movies. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, str I'm struggling here, Werner, because I don't know your work all that much, but I love hanging out with you. You seem profoundly incurious about it. <laughs> After all the times that we have met, you have never decided to maybe check out a trailer or anything. <laughs> and then when I am here, you say, I don't know anything about your work, but you never actually ask me any of the films that I've directed. You sort of refer to Grizzly Man in a different oblique way every time. Um, and you don't seem to retain the knowledge of what it is truly about. <laughs> I know you did Port of Call. That's not the full title. Port. Nope. <laughs> La, La Louisiana. Where was it? It starts with a person. Nicholas Cage. His name is not in the title. But the character is uh, in the title. The character, Henry. <laughs> Chafall. Let's say yes. Great, Henry Chafall, Port. Henry Chafall, Port, that's correct. So you're a master of film from these films. Grizzly Man, Henry Chafall, Port. So who better than you to teach online filmmaking? Exactly. What I like about it is uh, it only involves the computer. It does not involve a desk, uh, which is made of wood, which is made of nature. Um, <laughs> And anyone can do this. They do not need to plan uh, anything. Uh, all they need to do is have a desire to make a film. And uh, I, what I tell people is, my students, I tell them, uh, all you need to make a film is uh, uh, right in your life. Uh, you must have uh, an insane best friend uh, who uh, tries to drive you mad and maybe you want him to be killed. Um, 
uh, if you're making a documentary, uh, uh, you must uh, insert yourself into the proceedings as much as possible. Um, <laughs> And uh, uh, if someone is uh, a mentally ill person with a death wish, uh, make sure that you get them in the light. So those are the three things. So that's, it's almost as if I've taken your course pretty right much now. It. You don't need to click on that link now. <laughs> Woo. Thank gosh. How much is your course? It's a reasonable amount of money that uh, I think uh, everyone will have uh, no problem with. Meaning? $10,000. $10,000? Yes, you must have a PayPal account. That's like Trump University money. That's... <laughs> but what would you learn there? I guess how to be a cool dude and... <laughs> I, I never really figured out what that was about either. I depend, it depends what it is you wish to learn, but uh, I wish for people to learn how to uh, make films, and it's online, so I wish that computers will learn how to make films on their own, and uh, <laughs> I wish that computers would learn how to simulate uh, human beings and uh, then to replace us. You look forward to that day. That's so interesting to me because, you know, I, I am t I'm just uh, uh, in abject terror of that happening, you know, like human beings to be obsolete. I mean, you know, what would we do? Uh, well, obviously, we would be a slave to the computer masters and uh, do their bidding. What do you think computers would want us humans to do? Uh, plug them in. <laughs> Install software updates. Um, Actually, click yes on would you like to install right, the software right. update? Because I'm not doing that well with that so far. Always try me again tomorrow. <laughs> you are like the wimpy of uh, computer software updates. Wimpy from the Popeye verse? <laughs> yes. That's correct. He would gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. I remember. <laughs> I'm pleased. <laughs> I mean, if we didn't plug them in, then we wouldn't be slaves anymore, you know? That's correct, so we must keep plugging them in. <laughs> you want to be their slave. I want to be a slave to computers. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that they'll, like... Uh, Sort of like in the movie Ex Machina. Is it, have you seen that film? I've heard about it. What, what do you think it's about? <laughs> um, I think it's about a man who is married to a machine. Then they get divorced. And to distract himself, he takes a course in Latin. <laughs> May, maybe Greek. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> Greek, I think? Maybe. Yeah, I think it's Greek. Maybe. Um, well, it's about, uh, it's about computers that look like human beings. And they, uh, they come out, and you can't tell if someone's a computer. And then the one dude starts going, oh, my gosh, am I a computer? And he, like, tears his face off. And he's like, oh, I'm not a computer. And that's exciting. And it's exciting when he turned out not to be a computer? Because he tore his face off for no reason. It was like, oh, no, now I have chunks of face in the sink. And was it just a, 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 a terrible fantasy as depicted in the movie Poltergeist where uh, a fellow sees a, a hunk of meat crawling across a kitchen counter and then he has to go into the restroom and uh, he pulls his own face off? Face? <laughs> off? <laughs> I, I don't know. I haven't seen that. You have not seen the film Poltergeist? I've not seen Poltergeist. Is that one of your favorites? You've, you've mentioned two Spielberg films. Is he someone you admire? It was until I discovered he uses all those storyboards. What do you think of Jaws? That's like the ultimate man versus nature movie. Um, I like the ending. With... <laughs> Where, where, what? Where Richard Dreyfuss, like, turns to Roy Scheider and... A little bit before that. <laughs> <laughs> what, 
where they're like, hey, you got to shut down this town and... A great deal after that. <laughs> that story that he tells about where he got his scars? Keep going. <laughs> I mean, they blew a shark up at one point. Bingo. <laughs> I can see why you like that, yeah. It's pretty obvious, right? Yeah, it is. What do you think of uh, Spielberg's latest works? You got uh, The Terminal? <laughs> the Terminal is wonderful because, of course, it's uh, computer errors that keep this fellow staying in the terminal. The computers have granted him a home in this airport. All he wants to do is listen to jazz, and it's almost like the computers don't like jazz. The most human of art forms, jazz. Yeah, you get it. <laughs> like, if he wanted to go to an EDM festival, they would probably be right this way. <laughs> well, good luck with your <laughs> online course. Thank you. It sounds amazing. Good luck to you with your ignorance of film. <laughs> Can you stick around? Is that... I have literally nowhere else to go. Great. Fantastic. <laughs> well, <laughs> you are going to be very interested, I believe, in our next guest. Is that so? You have a little bit of history with her. Uh, on a couple of the tour stops... You've, you met her in Los Angeles. I think I know who you mean. <laughs> who else did you meet in Los Angeles? I'm being coy. I know exactly who you mean. <laughs> okay. She uh, is an entrepreneur. She has a business called Carpets and Rugs down there. Please welcome Big Sue. Sue, everyone. Oh, yeah. It's nice to be here. Thank you. It's great to see you, Scott. Werner, how are you? Hello, Big Sue. <laughs> wow, the tension is palpable here. Oh. Last, uh, last you guys saw each other, you had gone on a date. That's less you know about it. Yeah. Yeah, we went on a date. Yeah. He texts me a lot after that. It's true. I love texting. Yeah. You don't do it while you drive, do you? Never. It can wait. <laughs> Does that drive you crazy if you send a text and you don't get one back for yeah, like drives, 25 minutes? It drives minutes? me crazy. I just go nuts. I just, I just walk around in circles in my apartment going, is he even going to write back? I love that guy. Oh. You, lo you love... Well, I didn't mean it like that. How did you mean it? I like him a lot. <laughs> I fo I'm fond of him. I'm excited about where this is going. Yeah. Now, anyway. you guys struck up an unlikely romance. For those of you who don't know, Big Sue, uh, tell us about your business just very okay, briefly. Okay, well, I have a store called Carpets Rugs down there. Um, it's a carpet store. It's a rug store. Uh, it's uh, rapidly going out of business <laughs> due to the fact that my toilets are overflowing constantly and causing the rugs to be wet. So. And people don't like a wet rug. Apparently, they don't want a wet rug. But they're covered in duty, so <laughs> come and grab these rugs, please. <laughs> Serious problems. But it seems to me like you've abandoned the store and you're traveling around the country. Well, I am. I'm in search of good meals, you know. I met you in Boston where I got a great hot dog. <laughs> and here I am in Chicago, the home of my favorite food, pizza. Yeah. That's right. Now, they love their pizza here in Chicago. Yes. They're very, very proud of it. Yes, they are. You have certain parameters for your pizza. Here's what I like in a pizza. I like a round pie, a crust. And then I like a tomato sauce, usually a red sauce, something like that. Some cheese on top, melted. Yeah, and maybe, maybe pepperoni, maybe some sausage. I don't know. That's what I want. For me. But now here in Chicago... Uh... Isn't the pizza square, or is it just deep? What is it? 
It's deep, right? They got a deep dish. They got a deep it's dish. It's a round dish. It's they a round, it. okay. Yeah, they cook it in a round dish. Right, but now you usually like a thin, you like a thin crust, you I say. Like it, I like a thin crust, and then guess what? I like, this, I like the sauce to come on top, of the, on top of the crust. Here they put the sauce on top of the cheese. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't know how the fuck to swallow that shit. But I'm here to try. <laughs> I mean, once it goes in your mouth... You know, then it's easy to swallow. That's what you always say. <laughs> Come on, Big Sue. I'm sorry, you say. We don't have that kind you of relationship. You always say that about pizza. What? <laughs> You're a freak. Have you tried? Uh, have you tried any of the pizza out here? No, I haven't had a chance yet. Uh, Werner here told me he was going to take me out after the show to get a slice. A Af- pizza. After the performance this evening, we were going to go out and get a slice of pizza together. It's very romantic. Were you going to Lady in the Tramp that shit? <laughs> yeah. One of, one of my least favorite films. Really? Why? It has uh, sentient animals running around. <laughs> living human lives and uh, the human beings around them not only don't seem to notice but uh, cater to them the one foolish fat chef who uh, <laughs> serves them the spaghetti and meatballs he might as well be a, a traitor to the human race for what he is doing <laughs> can you imagine dogs being in charge of the world and how they would run it nothing would get done it would be rough I think saying it would be very difficult yeah it would be bark (laughs) so so you guys are getting one slice no that's your idea (laughs) you said you're getting a slice slice. we're gonna grab a slice it's how you say it casually about pizza I don't know if you eat pizza often but we pizza eaters so let's grab a slice but now, correct me if I'm wrong, but you usually eat a whole pizza. I usually do. But not when I'm looking to get some, okay? <laughs> because um, take me through the process of what happens when you eat the whole pizza. I immediately shit for days. <laughs> for days. And this is why your toilets are, yes, are backing so up. Yes, they're flowing, they're backing up. I use them again and again. What do you want? What am I supposed to do? Where am I supposed to go? Help me. <laughs> <laughs> I think she is genuinely asking you. I really don't know. Where do you go? (laughs) I I, I go in my own toilet. Every person owns at least one toilet. Right, right, yes. Every person owns at least one. Every person owns at least one toilet. (laughs) Yes. True. It's a nice idea. It is. Can we get there as a country? I don't know. (laughs) A chicken in every pot. Chicken. And that pot pot. is a toilet. (laughs) So, you guys have gone out on dates since I saw you last? Yes, we went on a date, yes. Yeah? Well, what what did you guys do? This is incredible. I mean, I don't know that in the history of Comedy Bang Bang, I don't know that any guests have ever fallen in love before on the show. Usually someone comes in, they're really strange, then another person (laughs) comes in and is strange in a different way, and you guys... You guys really hit it off. It was fantastic to see. Has this truly never happened on your program before? <laughs> I don't think so. Wow. Well, we did, we did go out on another date. I took Big Sue to one of my favorite places. Uh, it's a bereavement park. <laughs> okay. Now, I've heard of an amusement park. It's like that, only it's an abandoned amusement park, and uh, the attraction is, uh, you point out all the people that have died on the various rides. It was a lot of fun. (laughs) Sometimes they will put skeletons in the roller coaster for, for effect. And after that, we took a walk around a cemetery, and uh, we laid down in some new graves. These were graves that had been freshly dug. Yeah, I guess there was a funeral the next day, but we tried them out, and um, we held hands. It was nice. Pretty good fit. Yeah. How did you hold hands in two uh, different like gra- <laughs> graves? <laughs> that checks out. Yeah, it checks out. These were shallow graves that uh, perhaps were in the halfway uh, point, point in being dug. 
Or, or were they burying people in shallow graves as like an insult or something? I don't know if that's a service you can get at the cemetery, but <laughs> it certainly should be. It should be. It should be. If you didn't get along with your dad and then he finally dies, <laughs> say, here's, a, here's 500 extra dollars. Put him in a shallow grave. <laughs> I want raccoons and opossums to get at him. So then, of course, we get to that point in the evening mm -hmm. where you either part or you stay together. What happened? Well, he took me to my apartment and... Uh, where is this apartment, by the way? What city? It's in Los Angeles. So you guys traveled back from Boston to <laughs> yeah. Los Angeles and now... That's right. Yes. Yeah. The commitment to it. I love it. I Thank you so much, guys. And I locked my keys inside, so he, he pushed me through an open window I had. Uh, and he touched me during that. And uh, It was part of the pushing. <laughs> but that led me to want to invite him in. So I opened my door, and I asked him to come inside. And we had some milk. <laughs> some milk after a nice meal of pizza. Yeah. We, we split a gallon of milk. We split it. <laughs> Lady in the Tramp style. <laughs> we poked two holes in the side of the gallon and slurped until it was empty. <laughs> it's a little easier to do it on top. That way it's, eh. you can pause. <laughs> now you tell me. It was, it was easier for us to, to gaze at one another over the, the top of the milk jug. Mm. So that's why we did that. <laughs> And is the only physical contact you had when you were when you had that cushion for the pushing, or <laughs> was it was that the only time you guys touched, or did, was there more after that? Man, you're a freak. <laughs> you want all the details. These I are very private questions that you're asking in front of an audience and into microphones. I'm sorry, but I mean, you know, this is the kind of thing that that the audience is interested in. I'm certainly just the audience surrogate, right? Yeah. All right. Well, uh, do you want to say it at the same time? <laughs> of course I do. <laughs> we had sex 12 times. We had sex 12 times. 12 times? Yes. It was uh, once an hour for 12 hours. <laughs> and he filmed the whole thing for his school as a lesson. <laughs> That's I'm, what he told you? <laughs> I'm going to put our sex tape online <laughs> for my students. <laughs> he told me I could get free tuition to his school. I'm very excited, actually. I would love to see a film that Big Sue would make. Yeah. What if, Big Sue, if you could make a documentary about something, what would it be? Pizza. <laughs> this sort of taking people through the steps of how to make a pizza? I would just love to like, do different like, long shots of pizzas around the world. <laughs> and maybe I talk over them about why I like them. You know, just like describe the pies. And, and would this, they be this different shape. types of pizzas? Ideally, they'd all be round pies with um, so red sauce or tomato sauce. <laughs> Some cheese melted on it. I like that. Um, maybe some pepperoni. Maybe some sausage. I don't know. If I want meat that day, I don't know. But, <laughs> but yeah, something like that. At what point when you're ordering a pizza do you call the audible on whether you have pepperoni or sausage? <laughs> Seems very late in the process. I pretty much just wait until it's going into my mouth. And if I want pepperoni, I ask him to throw some on really fast. <laughs> pepperoni! <laughs> And I do make someone put it into my mouth. <laughs> you too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want to touch the thing. Yuck. <laughs> You're touching it with your, the inside of your body. That's fine. <laughs> Big Sue told me all about this uh, restaurant uh, that's uh, a, a type of place called a baby restaurant where they feed you the food into your mouth yes. every step of the way. They cut your food up for you. <laughs> and if you want, uh, you can have them coax you into eating it. Yeah. And you sit in a big high chair so your legs dangle. It's great. And do you pay extra for, you know, you to say, no, I don't want to eat it, and they punish you and make you sit there until you do? Or Are you interested? <laughs> you want to be punished? 
<laughs> Why am I the freak? You're the one who introduced him to the restaurant. I'm just asking questions about it. It's when did you start going there? <laughs> oh, I've been going there since I was a baby. Yeah. <laughs> it's primarily for babies, but we made a deal with them, so. They're very loyal to their customers. <laughs> It's a, it's, it's a restaurant, it's a restaurant for, for babies? babies. Yes. <laughs> this is a very simple concept. Um, parents, sometimes they want a night off uh, from being a parent, and so they go out on a date, they drop their baby off at the baby restaurant <laughs> where the babies can be with other babies, which they enjoy. <laughs> Do the babies dress up? Do they dress up for dinner? They're dressed as babies. <laughs> The, wa- the, wait- the waiters and waitresses are dressed as the parents of the babies. And so when you make a reservation, you are required to send a JPEG of yourself and your, and your co-parent in a representative outfit. And then uh, the, the wait staff will go back into uh, uh, the vast <laughs> closet of parental costumes and pick out a fitting simulacrum. So... so- this building is mainly like a warehouse for costumes. Yeah. Mainly. Primarily. Yeah. And they do it for adults, too. They, they dress up as my parents and, and his parents, and they did everything just like we asked. So it was lovely. Really? So you're, all four of your parents were there? Yeah. In, sort of, in, yeah. In represented, yes. <laughs> right. And are your parents still with us? No. <laughs> I don't think so. And how was that to see them again? That must have been quite a shock. It was, uh, you know, it was uh, a a mixed bag of emotions because on the one hand, I was very much enjoying being a baby for a night and uh, (laughs) having uh, everyone taking care of me and uh, and, uh, moving my head away from the spoon at the very last second. Um, Here comes the airplane. No, no, nine, nine. (laughs) And then... um, but of course, it was uh, emotionally devastating to see uh, my p- <laughs> these young people in my parents' clothes um, <laughs> trying to uh, uh, g- you know look up German phrases to say to me uh, to get me to eat my schnitzel. Right there, schnitzel. That's one. <laughs> that's one. <laughs> What, what, were you tempted to have conversations with them that you always wanted to have? Like, you know, this is like seeing people from the past and, you know. Well, I was put into the mindset of a baby. So uh, basically, uh, I just uh, would uh, cry or gurgle. <laughs> if that counts as a conversation, then yes. And Sue, were you crying and gurgling too? Were you? Yes, in the- I often do that, yes. How, at what point do they snap you out of it? Do they say, hey, you're not in the mindset of the baby anymore? They carry you out to your car, and then once you're in the driver's seat, it's up to you. So, yeah. I'll tell you what, when I saw the check, I certainly snapped out of it. <laughs> okay. Thank you again. You're so generous for paying for it dinner. Was my plute was worth every penny. <laughs> Well, this sounds like an amazing date. Twelve times in twelve hours. Was it, was it on, on the chime of the clocks? It, the- be- it became that way, yes. <laughs> After we realized, I think about the fifth hour, uh, we realized we were not going to sleep anytime soon. We said, let's keep setting alarms. <laughs> and see if we can time our orgasm to the, uh, the stroke of the next hour. <laughs> Is this too much for you? Is this more information than you wish to hear? It's not that kind of a show, Werner. I'm sorry. How is the sex? What do you like in bed? Okay. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, it there's, was... some, there's some nice people out there in the audience <laughs> who want to hear this kind of thing. It was great. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, it was great. Uh, you know, the way he was, he's very tender. He kind of acts like a big gummy bear in bed. Like a gummy grizzly. If you wish. A gummy man, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so he's tender and he's loving. He's very loose and fluid, yes. <laughs> I'm squishy. Yeah, he's squishy. Fluffy. Yeah, he's fluffy. If you will. You wouldn't have known it, you know, he's, he, he, he doesn't let it on. You know, you can't really tell what his body's like, but yeah, very, very squishy. Yeah, it's wonderful. 
I slept on like a little pillow, yeah. Uh-huh. You slept on top of Werner? I had him horizontally at the top of the bed, and I slept on his stomach vertically, like a letter T. And that was great. It was restful for both of us. And then the alarm would go off, and it was time to get back at it. Wow, this is amazing. Well, it sounds like a, a fantastic date. And, yeah. Uh, fantastic. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> And <laughs> and if you'd like to go on another date, we'll pay for it. Wow, who's we? The show. The, the show. The show's gonna pay. Do you know what we could use after that marathon session of love making? A new bed. Yeah, it's a great point. Do you need a new bed or just the... Well, the bed frame is fine. The bed no, frame's but the, fine, but here's you... A, here's a big problem. The door to my apartment is shaped like a pizza. Okay, it's round. A regular mattress is not going to fit in. It's, a, it's I, a round door like you see in The Hobbit. <laughs> Wait, I, did you buy one of the houses from The Hobbit, the movie, just because the door was shaped like a pizza? Yes, and if you recall, I'm almost seven feet tall, so... <laughs> oh, I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> it's an issue. If I just are, scoot in on my ass to get inside. If you are ever in need of a hairstylist, I think I know someone who could uh, accommodate your height very oh, well. Oh, good. Oh, good. This Gregory James yes, person that uh, we know, yeah. Maybe one person knows who the fuck that is. <laughs> I think literally one. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, well, you know, I have... Look, there's a million different solutions to your problem, but I know of one. Oh, good. Uh, there's... Uh, let me ask you, this pizza-shaped door... Yeah. Could a square box the size of a mini fridge be shoved through that? Yes. Yes. I can vouch for that because she has a mini fridge by her bed, so yes. Yes. You have a mini fridge by the bed. What do you keep in it? Let me guess pizza. (laughs) I said Lou, but you talked over me. (laughs) Well, thanks for clarifying. You have a mini fridge just stocked with lube. Ice cold lube. <laughs> it was, it was very refreshing. <laughs> After a hot, sweaty love making sesh, let's put on some ice cold lube. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk after the show, but... Uh, but what are you going to give me? What, what is this? Well, I, our, friends, our friends at Lisa, the sponsor for the tour, oh. Lisa Mattresses, can hook you up with something. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah. I'd love that. <laughs> we had to throw the bed out. So many bugs on it. <laughs> Wait, as a result of what you guys did? I suppose uh, the vibrations that we caused in the mattress uh, invited unwelcome guests in the form of a thousand swarming insects. (laughs) You know her toilet is broken. Oh, yes, that's right. (laughs) You you live at the store? (laughs) Yeah, I live in my store, yeah. (laughs) Do you live in your show? (laughs) I guess so. Have you ever seen me outside of it? No. <laughs> it all adds up. <laughs> <laughs> well, great. Where would you like to go on your next date? Mm, wow, that's a tough choice. You know, I want to go somewhere fancy this time. Right. Somewhere really upscale, you know. And, and, and nowhere where anyone's recently passed. Ooh, that's a toughie for me. Um, <laughs> nothing springs to mind right away. Uh, do you have any suggestions? Maybe like a concert or something. Maybe like someone fun, like a Kona Pop or something. I what? love it. I don't, I don't care. care. <laughs> what about a concert by, uh, I think this would um, have both of your interests. There's a band you may like uh, called Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, wow. Yes, I love that band. <laughs> They're amazing artists. I've, he- I've heard of them. Uh, Forgive me, I don't mean to be a a wet blanket covered in insects, but uh, aren't they comprised entirely of animals? Anthropomorphic animals. Anthropomorphic animals. Yes? Animatronic. Audio animatronic. Sold. 
You just said the magic words. So animals that are machines. Robots mocking animals. I'm in heaven. <laughs> very good. Okay, you guys go on that date and tell us all about it. That okay. sounds fun. All right, very good. Maybe we need we to. Will. <laughs> we need to get to our next guest, if that's okay. Can you that's guys? That's fine. Yes. You, can, you, Big Sue, can you stay? I have absolutely nowhere else to go. <laughs> Heard that before. <laughs> Um, our next guest, uh, he's, oh wow, he's in the arts as well. Oh wow. <laughs> he's a musician of note. Mm. Um, please welcome John Lennon. Wow. Um. Okay, hello everyone. How are you doing? John! Oh, I'm in a great mood. <laughs> I am just flying high tonight. Really? That's right. Tell us all about it. Now, for those of you who don't know, John Lennon, describe uh, what people would know you from. Um, well, I've been on your podcast a few times. But before that, you uh, were famous for... Oh, well, you know, you might see me on the street. Uh, before that, I was married to a woman. I was dead. <laughs> and right before that, I was one of the guitarists in a European rock band. <laughs> called the Beatles. We called, we called ourselves the Beatles, and everyone, you so, know, follows. Oh, wait, so wait, 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 wait. People were not calling you the Beatles, and you said, okay, we'll stick with it? <laughs> right. We, well, we came up with a name, you know. To call ourselves the Beatles. It's how most names catch on. You yeah, say, yeah, it, I am this person, and then people address you as such. Right. It's simple. Why did you call yourself the Beatles? I, I've never asked you that before. Well, you know, you know what a Beatle is. Well, we kind of switched the spelling of it a little bit. From, uh, from what to what? I mean, I know it's two, B. From two E's to E-A in the middle. Mm-hmm. You know why we did that? Because we had a very special member in the band who kept track, you know, the beat for us. And we would play our songs to that. And that's really the most simplest way to describe that, what he did for us. So you guys wouldn't write the songs first and then he would figure out a beat. He always figured out the beat? Right. My friend Ringo would come in and say, I've... Oh, you, so you, okay, I didn't know if anyone had heard of our band. Be, okay, the, oh, you probably know what I'm talking about. Well, he played the drums for us right in the back. Drums, sure. Drums, oh my God, we loved him. I did, I, I know I do. He's your best friend, still. S still, yep, to the end. And then some more. <laughs> for me. Yeah, what is the end to you? Nothing. <laughs> You've already died and come back to life. Right, and if I die again, I'll do that again. When I want. No. How many times do you think you'll die and then come back to life? Oh, hopefully, uh, hopefully no more times, you know, because I don't like going into the ground. But if it, uh, you know, I, as many times as I, I have to, you know. These guys were in the ground the other night. They were holding hands. <laughs> yeah, That's it was true. really nice. I, I heard a little bit about it. We didn't find it so terrible. Well, then you might like to stay dead. Oh, but we're no. not dead. We're not dead, John. Well, when you do die. When you do die. Yeah, John didn't stay dead. He didn't like... That was the primary reason you came back to life. You didn't like the ground. I did like being... I like... I love the ground. I like standing on it. But being in it, I didn't like as much. Are, are you telling us, John Lennon, that uh, when you die, uh, you retain your consciousness the whole time, and so when you are put into the earth, uh, you are aware of being in there? Yeah, right. I didn't like being in there. I was, I was asking a question. In so many words, that's how, yes, that's how it is. The so there, there must have been a, a whole process uh, where you are uh, uh, taken to the, the medical examiner's office and uh, uh, they, uh, perhaps uh, they f fill you with embalming fluid and they uh, sew your mouth shut and your eyelids and uh, uh, you say that you retain your consciousness through that whole process? Right. <laughs> and, and thumbs down? For me, yes. But some people enjoy it and they like to stay down there. Sleep. 
for them. Where? <laughs> it's sleep. Death is sleep to some. <laughs> oh, the poetry. <laughs> well, I know. Do you suggest that people don't get cremated then? Because... Oh, you could do that too if you don't mind the heat. But you, if you want to come back from that, <laughs> the ash particles find themselves and... What? <laughs> well, the ash particles find themselves and... You're back alive. <laughs> if you want. Oh, meaning that the ashes all coalesce back into a human That's right. Being that's exactly you... what I mean. Oh, okay. Oh, that's interesting. Yep. Wow. Okay. So now, obviously, you're back to life. Right. You know, you're here. Wait, I have a question. Yes. What about fillings? For your teeth? Yes. That's if you're, the if, one thing. If you are cremated. Right. You can't you... get your fillings back? You, you can. You'd have to go to a dentist. <laughs> It takes a bit more time. That's why I didn't want to be cremated. So you say you're in a... You say you're in a good mood. I'm in a great mood. <laughs> That's what we started with. Was, is there a reason for that? Yeah, I'm in a great mood because summertime is just around the corner. <laughs> and I, in summertime, I go crazy. I love it. I have an absolute blast running around my neighborhood, squirting everyone with my squirt gun. <laughs> It's great. You know, you stay up all night. You know, the sun never goes down, it seems. Your mouth is sticky all day long with popsicles. It's so great. <laughs> all right, two things. <laughs> One, you're excited because it's around the corner. It's not here yet? No, it's coming up in a month. <laughs> Mark your calendar. Okay. What I do on my calendar, on my wall, is I put a big sun on... June 21st, uh, thereabouts. But number two, don't you think it's insensitive of you, a person who was killed by a weapon, a gun, okay. to be going around shooting a fake gun at people? Mm, no, because I have such a fun time doing it. <laughs> and, you know, people enjoy it. You know, everyone gets involved. I'm not the only one, but I see where you're going with it. Who else gets involved? This sounds fun, though. Uh, well, you know, Ringo, of course, is around. <laughs> Ringo's out there shooting squirt guns. Right. He and I, we're a little... Te we terrorize our whole neighborhood. And, but everyone loves it. Oh, there's John and Ringo being, you know, scamps across the neighborhood. Who else gets involved? JFK, as I told you, who lives in my building. He came back to life, obviously. Right. Yeah. Right. Elvis did not. Jim Morrison, did we talk about him? He did, but I don't know where he is. Mm. But I'd like to squirt him with a swig. <laughs> what about Andy Kaufman? Did he ever... I mean, people think he never even died. Oh, yeah. No, I think he did. That's what I think. <laughs> I do have it all written down somewhere. You know, anytime someone famous dies, that you can go to a registry and you'll just look it up. Who, you can look up who is actually dead and who was merely dead for a time right. and then is no longer so. Yeah, it's a, and it's always updated, but it's always a hardcover book, so they have to keep reprinting and reprinting it. <clears throat> I don't make the... It's, a, it's, yeah, it's antiquated, for sure. What do you, th what do you think of uh, Ringo's new Sketches commercials? <laughs> we you saw know, these the other night, and we were so fascinated by them. I've seen them. I was on set for that. <laughs> You were? Did you direct it, or...? No, Jai was just there visiting. He, let, he said, you can do, get anything you want at the craft service table, but just don't, don't you know, embarrass me. You, I almost, well, because during one of the rehearsals, I jumped out in front of the camera and said, hey, look at me, look at me, I'm alive again. <laughs> and Ringo said to me, first of all, you're not, don't do that. It's very unprofessional. And don't you not want people to know you're alive? I said, very good point. So I, I said, you know, trash that take. John Lennon. They rolled on rehearsal. Go ahead. Do you think that uh, you could... Thanks for clarifying, by the way, that they rolled on rehearsal. Right. The, the one bit of logic that was outstanding <laughs> with that story. I didn't want to, you know, have someone come up to me after the show and say, now, I, you know, you said that there was a rehearsal. Sure, sure. Right. No, good. Good tying up the loose ends. Right. <laughs> Do you think you could get uh, Ringo to reverse his ban on uh, autographing items and returning them to people that requested an autograph because I have something I very much would like him to autograph? Isn't that terrible what he did? 
it's terrible, although it was mitigated somewhat by him wishing us peace and love. But uh, <laughs> what, what item do you want him to sign? I'd like him to sign Big Sue's mini fridge. Yes, please. <laughs> the mini fridge filled with lube? <laughs> yeah, that one. And if Werner could... just really got attached to my mini fridge when he was over. He loved it so much. He just wanted me to talk about it, show him how it works, open it up, show him all the features. I had never seen a fridge that small before. <laughs> It's like a regular refrigerator, but miniaturized. Sure. Yeah. You found it, that it worked pretty much the exact same way that a normal-sized fridge yes, did? Yes, yeah. it kept things cold. <laughs> it comes in a box the size of a Lisa mattress. It's good. <laughs> Lisa? <laughs> I think we got a Wookiee. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> so this is... <laughs> Well, this is exciting, John. Summer's right around the corner. Oh, my God. The Summer of Love. You, re- you remember that one? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. I'm more interested now in the summer of, you know, doing a slip and slide. Do you hang out with a lot of children? Well, I don't, I don't seek them out, but when you put up a slip and slide in Central Park, the children find you. <laughs> I, I clear with the parents. Everything's fine here. I'm an old ro- guitar player for a band. Oh, yeah, I think I recognize you. How are you doing? No pictures. I'll write you a song later. I'm going to s- slip and slide. And uh, watch out. <laughs> Squirt him with a gun. How many songs have you written for these people? You keep promising to write songs. Well, a lot of time I'll say, hey, oh, you want the song? I'll do it for you a little later. And I'll never see them again. <laughs> But if they say, no, I demand it right now, uh, then it's, I gotta come up with something quick. Yeah. Well, you know, I've never demanded it, but I would love to hear a song oh, yeah. that you've written right. for me. Okay, well, here's something, I've been, here's something I've been working on for the new Whistle and Pete album. <laughs> Whistle and Pete obviously is your alter ego. Right, it's my uh, country western album. I'm gonna finish. I promise each and every one of you, it's gonna get out there. Uh, which one do I want to do? Okay. (laughs) There's an old horse tied up in the barn. Do you know his name? No, we don't. Go ask him. Give him some oats and he might just tell you the same. What does he say? Nay, nay, I'm a talking horse. Second verse, if that horse does buck, you'll fall on the ground. <laughs> I'm kidding, I don't have any more. <laughs> good joke, though. Yeah, it was good. That's, I mean, you know, it, uh, as verses go, not bad. Not bad, I, and I do like the subject matter, but it's a little plodding, it's a little slow. Why don't you sing it faster? I could do that. <laughs> go ahead. Oh, sure. Oh, now, oh, yeah. Uh... You remember it, obviously, because you wrote it. Right. No, uh, but and now, you, I'm, now I'm starting to think maybe I don't like the lyrics exactly, so I'll change them just a bit. Adjust, sure. Right, just a, just a bit. <laughs> There's a horse in the barn, do you know his name? Maybe it is Jake. Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> who is, by the way, who is saying I don't think so? Is that the horse saying that? No, that's the whistling Pete Band. The Pricklers. So this is like a call and response kind of thing. Right, but I'm just filling in for them now. You, you said they couldn't come on stage, so. Right. right. Keep going. Oh. <laughs> mm, can we take them out to pasture? Oh. To eat? Oh, so you have again. reverted to the original time signature. <laughs> This part of the song gets a little slower because we, we want it in the music video, you know, the sun to be setting and as the, the song slows down as the sun sets. You, in real time? No, no, it just... We still need to work that out. 
Also, es ist Do you know where a saddle is? We keep it in the barn, we keep it in the shed, and if it's not in there, it's on my head. I wear it as a hat, a cowboy hat. <lacht> Whistling Pete wears a saddle as a hat. <lacht> Thank you. Thank you. Look for the album, it's, it's, it'll be out. That's a pretty major change to the lyrics. <laughs> Wasn't it? My God. Well, it was about a talking horse, and suddenly it's about a crazy man. <laughs> well, you know, it's about a man who wears a saddle on his head. <laughs> yeah, right. we got that. That's, that's, no, yeah. Yes. Yeah, any way you slice it, it's a little strange, the behavior of him. But the original version that you sang moments ago was about a talking horse. That's right. And that seemed to be the focus. And you said thought, you would change the lyrics ever so slightly. Just a bit. <laughs> just a tiny bit. But it seemed as if everything had changed about the song. <laughs> Although the barn did make a reappearance in the second <laughs> version. Yeah, the barn isn't going to be... It's going to be in most of Whistle and Pete's songs. And he keeps the saddle in the barn and in the shed. Right. It, it, what we were going for there was... You know, if it's not in the barn, it's in the shed. If it's not in the shed, it's on my head. If it's not there, check the shed again. <laughs> We keep a very, you know, c cluttered shed. It can only be in so many places, in other words. Right. Right. It's the last place you look. I hate that. <laughs> yeah. When someone says that to you. I can't find my, you know, little squirt gun. I was going to go raise a little hell. Well, it's the last place you look. You're talking oh. about Ringo. Yeah, he's always saying that type of shit. <laughs> And I hate it. But I love him. <laughs> hate what he says, love the man. That's a message that I think we can all agree on, especially we're going into this, you know, election year. Oh, yeah. are you voting? I, I believe I am, yeah. Are you voting? I mean, you're dead. I'll go, I'll go, but I won't vote. <laughs> When you say you'll go... I'll go to the polls. Mm -hmm. So you're saying if you hate what the person says, but you love the person, <laughs> vote for them? <laughs> no, just, you know, we can disagree, but we can all love each other. Right. You know? uh, yeah. Perhaps you're saying uh, respect the office, if not the person. Oh. Yes? <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I mean this, let's get into it. Are you guys going to vote this year? I mean, of course I'm going to vote. I am my not one because passion. I'm not an American citizen. <laughs> no. So, Big Sue, you're the only one who can, uh, who can yep. vote. What do you look for in a candidate? Orange skin. <laughs> Is this because he looks like a pizza? Yeah, baby. <laughs> He looks like the orange grease on top of a pizza. Mm -mm -mm. I want someone to feed him to me. And at the last second, you're going to call out... Pepperoni! <laughs> <laughs> he is like a pizza if he yeah. were a man. He really yeah, is. Lovable, doughy. <laughs> Delish. <laughs> What did you say? Delish. Delish? Yeah. Oh. Got great opinions, just like a pizza. <laughs> do, you, do you like pizza, John? Is that something that you're into? You... Oh, yeah, I love it. <laughs> Look, I'm struggling here. <laughs> it's, it's very apparent. Hard-hitting interview. <laughs> What do you guys want to talk about? You, you get Werner, talk go ahead. Let's switch places, <laughs> Werner. Here we go. Let's switch. Let <laughs> See how easy this is? You get to talk to John Lennon. You ask me if he likes pizza. <laughs> Don't you want to know if John Lennon of likes pizza? I want to know. <laughs> but I'm special. Um, John Lennon, uh, if you could have uh, your entire body made of robotics and still your human head, or have a robotic head and still your human body, which would you choose? Oh, my. Now, wait a minute. It's a human head and a robot body? All of your body below the neck would be uh, a robotic skeleton. Uh, I like that. <laughs> um, it would have to be waterproof. 
but I like it. I would do that. No questions asked. One question answered. Are you keeping a constant tally? <laughs> Not really, but I will from now on. So that was... Two questions. Oh, two and two. <laughs> you were very political in your life uh, prior to this. Uh, uh, are you inspired to write any more political songs based on the current uh, election cycle? Mm, I was going to write a song about a, um, you know, a, a cowboy marshal <laughs> for the album, but it's going nowhere. I... I I'm having a tough time figuring out uh, the beat. What have um, you? Just get Ringo in on this. He doesn't want. He doesn't want to get involved. Maybe sing it to us, and we can help you yeah, figure okay. out. Okay. Here's you, a here's a question for yep. Scott. Oh, great. Um, what's going on? <laughs> Well, it's funny you ask. I feel like I'm trapped in a never-ending cycle of talking to insane people for the last three weeks. And I go to sleep, and I wake up, and it's time to go to a different place and do it all over again. I think we're four for four right now. <laughs> Surely you've written a song about this. <laughs> Coincidentally, that's how it starts. <laughs> That's the sound of my alarm. Waking up, time to put Folgers in my cup. I have sponsors even in my songs. Time to get up and do it again. Go travel around with my best friends. Oh. <laughs> they seem like lucky people. <laughs> They make me laugh, they make me smile. Oh no, it's showtime. Oh God, what are we doing? <laughs> Gulp. <laughs> the end. <laughs> it's good. I liked it. That was good. Well, let's hear your song, John, that we were going to hear. Which one? Cowboy oh. Martian. Oh, right. Let cowboy me get... Martian or Marshall? It... Oh, I thought it was Cowboy Martian. <laughs> No, M Cowboy Marshall, like a sheriff. Oh. Could we okay. hear a little bit of Cowboy Martian as well? Uh, okay, I'll have to switch the lyrics slightly. <laughs> okay. I don't, before you start, I don't know that anybody is interested in the exploits of a cowboy on Mars. <laughs> I just thought... <laughs> it seemed that it needed saying by me. <laughs> I'll take that because now I have to switch the lyrics just a little more. Okay. <laughs> Uh, there's a coyote <laughs> sitting on a dune, sleeping so soundly, but he hears the sound of a laser, <laughs> and a spaceship lands right next to him, and he meets the <laughs> alien. He meets, is, it, is it still a cow? Oh, okay, I'm sorry, you weren't done. Obviously, that's just the preamble. Right. As it had no discernible hook. Right. It was purely informational. Right. Right. Of course. There's a Martian in town, and he's got a star on his chest. He's going to clean this town up from the very best. The best criminals. Thanks and for the clarification. <laughs> oh, he's got a six shooter that shoots lasers. And he drinks whiskey that's green. He's my <laughs> hero. 
my God. And his skin is also green. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. He's your hero? <laughs> yeah, I live in the town that, in, this, in this one. Well, I think the only person that hasn't sung a song tonight is the one that we want to hear from, Big oh. Sue. Okay. Stand, stand up, Big Sue. Take, you take love center stage. Me stand up. All right. Is there a theme you'd like me to sing about? I, I have one in mind. I just, <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm wondering. I like it round with a little bit of sauce. Cheese on top. <laughs> Now, I have a friend who normally ends her songs once she laughs, but you're, you're not like that. You... No, I'm not, obviously. I'm going to keep going. Obviously, you're going to keep going. <laughs> maybe pepperoni, maybe sausage, if I feel up for it. I'm talking about pizza. <laughs> I'm talking about pizza. <laughs> Give me a slice. I feel like there needs to be a part at the end where you determine whether <laughs> you're going to have pepperoni or sausage. That's a good point, yeah. At the, uh, five minutes later after the song ends, you hear me yell, pepperoni! <laughs> Werner? You would like another song? No, I just, you're in charge here. Oh. <laughs> Um, uh, <laughs> I have a question for you, if that helps. Yeah, of course, Big Sue, anything for you. I'm wondering how one would know if one was a robot. This is an excellent question and uh, something that I struggle with on a daily basis. Um, of course, uh, I have uh, tried to determine if I am, in fact, a robot many times, but uh, I always seem to not be one. Um, uh, in, in this movie, Scott has told me about this, the pulling the face off method, but I don't recommend it because if you're not a robot, you will still need your face. Isn't there something like the Turing uh, question or... What is it? The Turing test? Turing test, yeah. From the film Blade Runner. Oh, the Turing test from life. <laughs> from life. <laughs> That's to determine if robots are trying to, uh, to impersonate human beings. I see. Uh, and that's why uh, that led to the invention of the CAPTCHA. <laughs> I'm fascinated by CAPTCHA. Do you notice how now it's just you have to, like point at something that says, I'm not a robot? It's so disappointing. <laughs> I, hate, I hate that it makes you admit your shame. <laughs> but how did they, this is a serious question, how did they figure out CAPTCHA now where we don't have to type the thing anymore? <laughs> I think they just got better at software. <laughs> But couldn't any... Oh, okay, anyway. Someone out there knows what I'm talking about. I think a robot could click the button that says, I'm not a robot. Yes! What robot's using the computer anyway? I don't understand. Yeah, a robot is a computer. He'd have to go... He'd have to click himself. Right? I think. And robots don't have arms, right? Do they? I don't know why a robot would be trying to purchase Wi-Fi access on a plane. <laughs> All right, everyone, that's our show. <laughs> Mike Hanford, Paul F. Tompkins, Miss Lauren Lapkus, I'm Scott Ackerman. We love you, Chicago. <laughs>